President Obama headlined a fundraiser in Austin, Texas last night where he praised U.S. troops and intelligence officials for tracking down Osama bin Laden. And because of the extraordinary bravery of the men and women who wear this nation's uniform and the outstanding work of our intelligence agencies, Osama bin Laden will never again threaten the United States of America. American officials are still waiting for access to the three widows of bin Laden who've been in Pakistani custody since the raid that killed the al-Qaeda leader. Now, if they do get to interrogate the women, our next guest, former CIA operations officer Charles Faddis, knows better than most how that would be handled. Good to have you with us this morning. You also know uh, very well what we could or, in fact, could not actually get from these women. What do you anticipate they would give in terms of information? You know, I would anticipate that what we're going to get out of these ladies, assuming we get access, is going to be extremely limited. I mean, fundamentally, interrogation is about compulsion on some level. I'm not talking physical force, but you have to have some mechanism for making a person want to talk to you. And I would say all the dynamics here are exactly contrary to that. So there's no incentive whatsoever for these women to talk? Uh, these are people that have dedicated their lives to bin Laden, dedicated their lives to the cause. We just killed bin Laden. I would think they would think fundamentally that the best way they could revere and remember him would be to give us absolutely nothing. Is that such a loss if we don't get anything from them? I mean, how much do you think they actually know about the goings-on of al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden? I would expect that actually what they know is pretty limited. I would not think that they would operationally be involved, and I expect they were probably confined to relatively domestic routines. Would, they, would those domestic routines, though, even details on daily life within that compound, daily routines of Osama bin Laden, could that offer any insight? It could offer some insight. I mean, obviously, in this business, you're looking for any scrap of information. So in a perfect world, would we like to know that? Yeah. I don't think these ladies are going to have key details on plots, threats, locations of other individuals. And frankly, I don't think they're going to give us much of anything. To get even any small bit of information, you're going to have to make them feel as comfortable as possible. Um, would U.S. interrogators be alone in a room with them, or will there be other people there, do you imagine? I think what's going to happen, again, assuming that we get access to these folks, is that we're going to have a limited period of time in the custody, I mean, in the presence of Pakistani uh, intelligence or security officials. They're going to bring them there. We're going to be in front of them for a limited period of time. And these women are going to know that we don't have them under our control, and they're there for a, a narrow window of time. So they just wait it out. If they end up, they're, they're released at some point, they go back, they find people that they may know. Could they be bringing valuable information back with them to al-Qaeda? Is there a concern about that? Um, maybe. I mean, I think probably they're not going to, I th think probably they're not going to be privy to many, many sensitive details. I mean, fundamentally, I don't think these are individuals who, are, who have any keys to the kingdom for either side. Do you think there is anyone uh, who may have some keys? You know, it would have been great to talk to the couriers, uh, and obviously there are other individuals, whoever was, Osama was communicating with the rest of his network via couriers, so what we really want now is the people to whom those couriers were going from Osama. Charles Fast, great to have you here. Thanks for your Thank insight you. this morning.